All right, so I'm talking off my slide. Hello, my name is Tamo Nakahara. I'm head of the developer experience team at a company called WeaveWorks. Hopefully you are here because this is uh, an up to two hour workshop that I hopefully you brought your laptops where we'll be walking you through um, getting started with uh, a sort of a GitOps offering that we have um, that uh, if you've known Flux, which is out on the CNCF, we're really excited that uh, last month we launched uh, a new open source free layer called Weave GitOps that is built on Flux, um, but is sort of for a broader audience, so to speak. You know, so, you know, Flux is um, a really, really powerful tool. So we know that we wanted to build a product on it, but for some people, it might require a, quite a bit of knowledge and, and um, startup. So with Weave GitOps, we're offering something, and this is called Weave GitOps Core, with this free and open source layer, um, perhaps a way that you can start immediately um, experiencing the power of GitOps uh, without maybe sort of the startup knowledge that you need to put into that. So this is really early stages. We just launched it. We're very excited about it. So we really are appreciative for all of you um, attending today, going through the steps and giving us feedback on you know, whether this is something that you would use. Um, so uh, our general format um, will be to give uh, like a quick overview so you understand the, the goal and the vision, uh, and then we'll go through the steps. Uh, so for that, we're really um, lucky to have Jordi Mon Companies, who is our product marketing manager here at Weaveworks. Um, Jordi will be sort of setting that vision of like, um, you know, what Weave GitOps is, where it's going to take you, um, and uh, really how maybe some background on like, you know, why, why we built this um, product having been in this GitOps space after having coined the term for all this time. Uh, and then we're exact, excited to have um, David Stauffer, who will be, uh, who's our PM at WeaveWorks, who'll be actually going through these step-by-step. -step. So hopefully you all have your laptops ready and we'll be able to go through that. So a little bit of background, if you've never heard of WeaveWorks and this is your first time here, uh, welcome. Uh, so WeaveWorks is a startup based in um, San Francisco, London, Berlin, um, New York, and a few other areas. And we're also distributed in a remote team. Um, uh, we have a couple of products. Um, one of them is Weave GitOps, but a lot of uh, what we've done that you might have heard about us is um, around the open source work that we do. So not only have we done a lot of work around um, upstream Kubernetes contributions, and some of you might have heard of WeaveNet, which was one of the early um, sort of networking layers that we offered. Um, our key projects right now that you know have gone through the CNCF are probably you've heard of Flux, which is kind of what started this move toward GitOps. Um, we have Flagger, which also provides um, progressive delivery, which is now um, for a while now been within the umbrella of Flux. Uh, and Cortex is another project that we've had a long time that has really like scaled the abilities of Prometheus. And as you hopefully um, will learn or have known, you know, a lot of what makes uh, GitOps really useful is leveraging things like Prometheus metrics uh, to be able to automate, right? The decisions that get made, whether it's in the GitOps um, uh, functionality or progressive delivery functionality. So uh, we've got these many things. And as I mentioned, now we also have we GitOps, which is also free and open source. So if this is your first time here, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, hopefully you'll come to future ones. And you can check out our website, weave.works, where it will have uh, any information about us and the products and open source projects that we have out there. So a little bit of house, housekeeping. Like I said, we'll start out with about 10 to 15 minutes of an overview that hopefully, as this workshop is two hours, um, you know, we'll get into the steps, but hopefully it'll set the vision to, you know, where you want to be at the end of this, how you want to be leveraging uh, a great, powerful way of doing GitOps. Um, if this is your first time, like hopefully you're also going to see GitOps in action for the first time and it should be pretty exciting. So we wanted to make sure we set that stage and set the context in the beginning so that as we um, go through the steps that, you know, you, you're uh, knowing where the end goal is. Um, and as I mentioned, also we have our PM, um, David, uh, who will be um, going through those steps with you. And so what's really important is we've set aside two hours. Uh, if you get stuck at any point, like please do not be shy to ask and raise your hand. Uh, this is us learning as much as you. So uh, we've done our best to this point to have our documentation, you know, set clear information around prerequisites um, and what the steps are. But, you know, we've 
had a few of these in the last month and each time we've learned to see like oh what what people's starting point is so i hope that you won't be shy we're happy to um wait and answer all questions and we're happy to wait for you to go through all the processes we want to make sure that you're successful today so don't you know hopefully you won't just be like oh, i'll just watch the recording later um, so stick around with us because we'll stick around with you um, so I want to just give a heads up too that um, we just had the event get up stays, but you can still get early access to the recordings. Um, if you want to know anything more about get up so go to getupstays.com um, and you'll also be able to see if you go to our weaveworks channel uh, on YouTube, we had uh, get up stays twice last year one the original one and the EMEA one in the fall so we have all kinds of amazing amazing useful talks on anything you want to know about GitOps uh, at the GitOps Days events. So um, if you want early access for the event we just did, make sure to register at GitOpsDays.com and you should get an email with the links. And um, the uh, early access also has the full stream events. So you'll get to also listen to the fantastic music that we have from <laughs> our community manager, uh, Daniel Holbach, who we also jokingly called DJ Desired State. Um, all right, so as I mentioned, this is the overview. We'll do about a 10, 15 minute overview and uh, we'll be going through the getting started, which you can follow along. So this is our key uh, product page. So it's weave.work slash product slash GitOps dash core. Um, and we say core because that is the open source free part of Weave GitOps, but it's a whole product offering. Um, and here again, this is the same link here that we have. Uh, and we'll be going through these specific uh, docs through uh, docs.getups.weave.works. And we'll put this in the chat as well. Uh, and very importantly, um, yeah, if you want to take a picture of this, uh, we have a Slack channel. So this is a way that you can join the hashtag uh, WeaveGitups uh, Slack channel. And I'll also add, if you haven't joined our Slack channel before, I'll also add a link on how to invite yourself to our Slack. Um, so with that, I will hand it over to Jordi. Hello, thanks so much, Tamar. Can you see me well and hear me well? Yes. Fantastic, thanks so much. Um, I see that there's people joining. I'm, I'm about to share my screen, so allow me. I know you're seeing just a portion of my screen, but it will be a second. So I know there's people joining from Germany. Um, oh, wait. I did it wrong again. We had Europe. Ireland, Ireland, India, India. Me from Spain. By the way, I might be, I might be sounding a bit too happy because I I'm based in London and I'm happy to be there, like David is actually. Um, but I'm visiting my family for the first time in almost two years. So if I sound a bit too happy, even you should be seeing my screen. By oh my goodness, apologies. Apologies. Oh. oh my God, why is this option? I'm doing something really wrong. And while we're waiting, uh, just to remind people when you're in the uh, chat, that's the best way to chat with us. Uh, make sure that for the two field that you choose panelists and attendees, um, that way we can make sure that we're um responding to shared questions and i notice often that people help each other and it's great you get a sense of community so uh, especially if you're helping somebody if you don't choose panelists and attendees they won't actually see your answer so just a reminder to do that when you join uh, oh great and we practiced earlier oh. so this is what your slides look like so now yes, we got it to really, where it was i'm really really sorry uh, i was going to say that if i sound like like even high or drunk it's only because i'm uh, really happy to be together with my family for, you know, almost the last, uh, for the first time in the last two years. Uh, but also this messing up the setup might also induce you, to, induce you to think so, but I'm not. That's my name, Jordi Moncompanj. Um, I'm, as, you say, as I said, uh, the, as Tamar said, I'm the Product Marketing Director. I'll waste very, very little time of, your, of, um, of yours because I know you want to get your hands dirty with uh, with the product itself, but just like, let me give you a bit of context, like Tamar said, about why we decided to put out a product like this, where we're going, where we're heading up, uh, at with it, and uh, and a bit of a background, so past, present, and future in a way. Um, so 
the reach of GitOps in general as a technology, as a set of uh, as a set of principles and best practices to achieve continuous delivery is super broad. It, it appeals to devs that can deliver de uh, cloud native workloads with GitOps, right? It does appeal or it solves problems for operators that can manage infrastructure provisioning from Git, right? So in a way doing it the GitOps way. It does also solve for several, several use cases from the platform or DevOps or SRE uh, type of persona or developer, if you wish, uh, that can create a platform based on GitOps principles uh, for developers to peruse and deliver their, their use cases. So given such a range or given such a broad uh, appeal as a product, We've GitOps is, and specifically We've GitOps Core, the tier that today we're going to get our hands dirty with, uh, is focusing on the on the former, right, on the developer, and the typical use case that they are trying to solve for, which is application delivery. So with We We've GitOps Core, what we are trying to effectively do is to make cloud native application development and delivery in Kubernetes feasible and less complex for developers, right? Like Tamao pointed out, Flux is extremely powerful. It actually powers Weave GitOps, and yet it can be daunting and a bit complex depending on your level of maturity, which is one of the reasons why we decided to go with, with, with this type of product. So the, the canonical definition of Weave GitOps is a product ser served in two tiers, a free and open source one, which is Weave GitOps Core, the one, the one that we will be focusing solely today. And it, the one that solves for the lowest maturity level of GitOps. So if you're new, completely new uh, to Weave GitOps, uh, to GitOps in general, apologies, or if you're a bit advanced in that, in, in, in your knowledge of GitOps, not as not you're not definitely not the the at the highest levels of maturity. You haven't dealt with it, you haven't launched in production with it and so forth. That's that's who GitOps, Weave GitOps Core appeals to. But there's a higher tier paid for one that we call Weave GitOps Enterprise that the rationale being Weave GitOps Core will always be free, will always be open source and it's aimed at developers that want to try out how to use easily, how to easily onboard Kubernetes and launch and deploy their applications there. And the minute that it is successful and this use case um, uh, expands through the company and the knowledge and maturity of the company uh, moves up the maturity scale, then we've GitOps Enterprise comes in and solves for other use cases that I'll touch upon later, but uh, by, for which we, we will charge a, a subscription for. So that, that's the rationale. But if you're a sole user or, or um, Group of developers, then this this uh, we've get up score the product that will be demoed and which with uh, that we, you'll learn from today will always be free and open source. So if you, by the way, uh, uh, intrigued about the maturity model, this is a research that we that we did uh, ourselves, WeaveWorks, and that again is the reasoning behind the pricing and the tiering of the product. And if you want to download it, just Actually, if you look for, if you type in the in Google GitOps maturity model, it's probably the first result. Otherwise, you have it in our blog uh, at the URL uh, there. So we've GitOps, as it, as Tamao actually said, and I reiterated, it is the the easiest way for you to use GitOps to optimize the software lifecycle. Your your SD, SDLC. Uh, it favors convention over configuration and supports configuration, right? But it is. It doesn't mean. I mean, that's that's probably the definition of a product, right? Something that is uh, that has got some conven conventions built in, but it does have the ability to tweak it, right? And that's something that um, uh, David will show later. Uh, and it, it what it basically allows you to is to program that those automations that will allow you as a developer to focus on pushing code, integrating code, running CI, which is basically what what developers are excel at right while get the automations takes care of of uh, preventing drift taking the workloads to kubernetes keeping them running etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's basically we've gitops is basically a gitops platform right 
So as I mentioned before, we are not aiming at the platform developer to build it. We're actually providing that for uh, developers right now. So the automations, the conventions that the product has built in are built on top of seven years of experience. So we've built this product and structured it around the research that we've done in the, the maturity model that I mentioned before. But the reason why we're delivering now to the market, to everyone, uh, a product is built on seven years of experience delivering the open source technologies that Tamao went through before. So a lot of experience delivering to the community, to the CNCF in particular, but to the, whole, to the, to the community at large. Uh, products that allow you to become uh, uh, mature or to become um, to enable GitOps in your workflows, but also providing services to multiple companies, huge companies. So we've used those products that we've released to the community, and we've we we have actually built services around them and keep providing them to for seven years um, uh, to companies as big as the ones you see on screen and others. Um, what, I guess what I'm trying to reach is that something we take pride in here, and Tamal mentioned it also, is that we coined the term GitOps. But this is not something that we carry as a bad sort of like this. Is, like if, if you ever refer to GitOps, please point to us who coined it. It's just more to actually frame the coinage of GitOps as more as something that after seven years, although probably less, because uh, Alexa is the CEO and founder of the company coined it in 2017, but it's a, it's a conclusion, it's an afterthought um, that comes from exposing ourselves to building those technologies and providing those services that we realize that GitOps does click with people, that it's not only a suitable uh, workflow for companies as big as the one you see there or smaller ones, but it's also something that people do understand, right? Uh, although some of the underlying technologies that under uh, some of the underlying technologies such as Kubernetes and Flux, for example, can be daunting. So again, based on the research that we've done in maturity and our experience serving these technologies, we've decided to try to make it simple, specifically for developers. So. Basically, that, that's it. So that's our mission to provide a developer centric operating model for the cloud native technologies. WeVox provides a modular again. So it's it's convention over configuration, but you can adapt it to your needs. Uh, we what the, the parts that are convention that are productized in a way are the ones that we see we've seen throughout this years repeat and repeat and repeat. And we we're just setting we are fixing those best practices after all these years of experience, but it's not completely set. The workflow can be adapted. Um, we're a neutral vendor, so we we actually we run we run we allow you to run your applications in any Kubernetes. What we mean by that is that you you'll be able wherever Kubernetes runs, you'll be able to run your applications there from within Git. And we can we can we deliver consistent management and monitoring workflows to simplify operations. This is a use case, like I mentioned before. Uh, once the the initial use case of application delivery succeeds and expands, then continuous operations comes in. And that's what we've GitOps Enterprise solves for. But this is not the today's goal. So I'd actually finish with this. And um, uh, oh, apologies. Theoretical model of how this would work. This is actually what you'll see in practice in a minute, the minute I shut up, actually. Uh, David explaining to you. So a classic uh, software delivery life cycle would, would start with, with a developer or an application delivery life cycle with a developer writing code, unit testing it, the minute the green lights, you can build an image, then run uh, integration tests in a, in, in a specific environment. Once that, those are green lighted, you would be promoting that to a, another, a, another environment, in this case, production, in a very simplified way. Um, this is the, the way in which GitOps We've GitOps actually uh, overlays on top uh, of, of it, and I actually did an over, a, a very bad one. But what what we what you will effectively see is that um, the the configuration of the different environments. Remember, dev and prod in a very simplistic way is stored in Git, right? At the same time, you're building in the same way, so running unit tests and then building an image that will that will effectively eventually run a integration test. 
and once that that um, that uh, gateway that those tests are green lighted, you could run a you could act the developer could actually promote those those uh, changes via PR. So through all the gateways that a pull request has, so anything like code owners that need to approve changes to specific. Uh, code um, modules or whatever, uh, just pro just providing visibility in the uh, pull request to anyone that might need it in security and so forth, or even the eventual approver of the merge request. So there's different levels of visibility and approval that go before anything changes in the in the in the Git repository that hosts the code that will eventually be promoted. Uh, um, reconciliated or taken deployed to the kubernetes environment in production by weave GitOps, right so i know this is very theoretical and very high level again you'll 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 get your hands dirty right now with tavit and it may it will make sense but basically this is a high level um overview of how the the weave GitOps model and the, the weave weave GitOps product and we the GitOps model will actually um, um connect with a classical software delivery life cycle, uh, life cycle or an application delivery life cycle. So thanks so much. Uh, now it's time for a demo. So I leave David to actually jump on and, and provide the demo. Tamao, you uh, are- um... Sorry, as we're switching, uh, does anybody have any questions? Well, if some come to mind, please uh, put them in the chat and I'll be monitoring that. Uh, so with that, everybody has their laptops, right? In fact, maybe if people want to put in the chat, um, how many people are using Macs, Windows, uh, Linux, some obscure other crazy thing? Uh, I've put in the uh, chat as well the link to the uh, docs, the intro that will be following along today someone has a slow mac okay <laughs> i think i might be in that category too starting to feel the burden of uh, how much tabs in browsers do you have an impact um, so uh right. with it maybe david you can um start sharing your screen maybe we'll start with yes. the intro page okay we've got windows oh how do you use windows uh linux yes um and maybe we can go to that link that I shared, the intro page. Excellent. Yes. yes. I wanted to show basically, hi, I'm David. I'm, I'm working as a product manager here at VA um, and across the different VA GitOps products we have. And I wanted, first of all, to show you how you actually get to, to the documentation and the product. So you go to our website, vaf.works. You go then to, to products and you click on VAF GitOps core. And from there, you can, here is the link to the docs, which I recommend highly to you, you should go to. So this, you go to read more and you land on, on the docs. You can as well go directly. It's docs, docs.gitops.vf.works and you get here. And this is basically where we start. We have some prerequisites and we are doing GitOps in relation to Kubernetes. So you need basically, um, first of all, you need a GitHub account because we're talking about GitOps. You need basically Kubernetes installed and kubectl installed. And we recommend to you using something like kind and kind requires Docker, which is kind of a lightweight Kubernetes that runs in, 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 in the Docker runtime. If you want to see how to install kind you can go to to this website i can share with as, as well a view and and here you have documentation how to install kind and and yes so basically does to this point anybody have questions or can we jump in yeah and i know in the last couple times that we did this um, some people were new to kind and um, got it started shockingly fast so uh, that was really encouraging as well to like they were able to kind of step aside get it set up and then get back onto the stream of uh, going through all the steps so yeah let's start with yes we are going to be supporting other um you know get uh, offerings but for this one right now um, 
a lot of people have GitHub accounts, so we're starting there and it's also something that doesn't cost money. So I just put in the chat, like who has to go and create an account to be able to go through these steps? Uh, if so, we're happy to wait. Hopefully it won't take too long. Um, uh, yes, as well. So we can as well go already a st step further and we need to install the CLI. And we have here as well our, our Git repo, right? From VF Git Ops. If you click here on top of the link, you get directly to the Git repo. And we have as well, basically you can see compiled versions for, for this kind of, of systems. So if, if you don't have, for example, because we are working, gonna work on Mac with an x86 kernel, if you have something different, we are happy to provide you. Basically, if you don't know how to curl yourself a specific version, we are happy to provide you with, with help of Jerry who will send the background, the correct curl link for if you require a different version. Um, besides this, I would say we, we start and basically let me go back. And the first thing we should do is probably create a GitHub token. Who doesn't know how to create a GitHub token? Let's go to GitHub. It's quite easy. I will show it to you. You go basically to GitHub, you go to your settings and you go then to developer settings. You go to personal access tokens and you create a generating new token. This token, you give it a name and basically you need, it needs repo access. So this needs to be the be generated and you can say, this is my GitOps demo and you would generate this token. Oh, this is already taken, GitOps one. And basically then we have this token, I'm gonna delete this because we, we don't really need this and, and you could do stuff with my GitHub account if you have this token. The important thing is that you copy it and you set it as a, as a environment variable in your, in your terminal. You can, do this quite easy in in bash or in um, set set sh if you write export you basically you, you define your variable i will not do this i will say i will create a different one this this are temporary ones but you could say this is my token and then you say my token is one two three and you enter and if i now basically echo this variable token, you will see that it returns one to three. So if you don't know how to set a token, this is how you do it. Um, okay. The other thing you definitely need is an SSH um, certificate, right? So you need as well have generated uh, SSH key and you do this as well here. The pro this process is a bit more complicated. So you go to your SSH keys and you generate a new one and you need to do this with, with some documentation. And here is the guide from, we're not gonna do this right now, um, but I think we are happy to, to help you in the background if you don't know how to generate an SSH key. Great. If uh, we have all oh, done this. Sorry, yes. do you mind if I take a moment? I just wanna double check with people. Uh, I've been checking in the chat here, um, so one, um, if anybody has to still create a GitHub account, please let us know. Don't be shy. Uh, and secondly, um, yeah, we'll give you a moment here if you're going through uh, creating the um, token, if that's your first time. So, and while we're waiting, we got a question that we get often, which is, you know, okay, so we now have this, we've GitOps, who said that it's built on Flux. And certainly, yes, people have asked like, so what's the difference? So right now, uh, certainly we're, um, in the early days, so we just launched this. So you know, uh, we have sort of a thin layer, but with the beginnings of like where we're going with, um, you know, eventually enterprise level GitOps with Weave GitOps. So currently, certainly, like you might not see too much of a difference between Flux and Weave GitOps. So I'm getting sunlight in my camera, uh, but with each iteration, you know, hopefully to be very clear, like what the differentiators are, like obviously. For us, like Flux is the most powerful tool. We're 
continuing to move it through the CNCF. We're going from incubation toward graduation. So we're continuing to build that as the most powerful, but we're also building Weave GitOps that we think um, for a larger audience of people um, who might find getting started with Flux a bit challenging on day zero in terms of the kinds of knowledge that you need to have, a level of understanding of Kubernetes and different things. Weave GitOps, hopefully like in the next several months, you'll see more growth and say, okay, I see how like, it's not just a simple wrapper around um, Flux but that it's a it's a starting point for people who want to um, use to have GitOps in their companies, but may not have the right team or might not have the time or resources to be able to, you know, ramp up really quickly with Flux. Now, certainly when they start there, like hopefully we'll, you know, get to know people in the community better. And if we know that they might have particular needs or maybe their company is just like, we need to be on vanilla CNCF or something, then certainly we'd say like, let's level down and have a conversation about like, or you should just try out Flux, that that's probably a good, a good fit. But um, our goal here is to, um, you know, address as we're, as uh, Jordi Mon talked about, right, as we're on the other side of the chasm, there is a, a larger swath of people that um, we feel we've GitOps is built for. So I hope that answers. Um, and uh, like I said, with each iteration, I think it'll be a little bit more clear. And we totally understand if right now it might seem a little unclear, like what's sure. the difference between the two. I just wanted to add it's I like the comparison like between Linux and Ubuntu. So basically Flux is our engine and and like Linux is for Ubuntu. And and then basically we we built on top of this basically a lot of features that enables you to really get the full power out of this engine. And this is basically V8 GitOps. So you will already see that today the it's way more easy to to get started with with VA GitOps than with with the pure engine because we we do some opinionated decisions for you but you still have all the power of flux under the hood and we you can I will show you as well you can directly set everything just you would do with flux you just get some some extra benefits out of your GitOps um, um so we I have think a, we're ready to continue, right? Well, we have not? a question again about the, so can you get the link specifically around the GitHub token? So I know you went through it, but someone was asking for the link. Oh, here, I think it is. Let yeah, so the variable name is GitHub token. It's basically as well, always, uh, sorry, I missed. So I think it's uh, this. It's okay. so here. Let me I clicked on that see. GitHub guide. Is that correct? Is that what I should? Yes, yeah, so basically there's, where do we set the GitHub token? Here, it needs to be GitHub token, the variable name, and here is the link to the guide. And if people have trouble, I can show once again how you set it. Okay. Just but it seems this. okay. And don't forget, you need as well the SSH key. If not, this will not work. If you don't have one, you should check and you will see this if you go into your GitHub menu, you go, um, let me find my the correct page. You go to your settings, you go to SSH keys. If there's nothing, then we are as well happy to help in the background with, with Jerry's help to generate for you or help guide you to how you generate this. Yeah. And uh, okay. definitely, we definitely appreciate the questions because that means we know that you're following along. Um, if anybody else is stuck, uh, at any stage, raise your hand or well, let us know in chat. But uh, hopefully the links that we shared and the information was helpful. If not, so, uh, okay, yeah, I think we're, I think we're good. First step, let's install the CLI. So we copy this command, we go to our terminal and we paste it. And you can see now it's downloading it. It's asking me for my password, which is probably not a bad thing to do. And now we should get a message like this back, which tells us what, what engine we are using. We are using Flux version 0 0.16, and we are using the Vigo version 0 0.2. This is the first step we need to do. We assume now 
we have all installed. I, yeah, let me check what is the next step in the documentation because maybe I go different to the getting started guide and I want to go in the order. So yes, we did this. So we assume we have all installed kind and for kind to run, you need for a stalker to run and then and once stalker run, we can create a kind cluster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind create cluster. And now this is gonna spin up a Kubernetes cluster and you can as well put some configuration into it and it's, it's documented in kind how many worker nodes you want and how many control planes you want and so on. So there's a bit of flexibility, however you want. Okay. To and, create your, yes. and while we're here waiting for you, I know that there are, we had one person in the past who did not have Docker running, and uh, we did have a few people who, do, who didn't have kind installed. So I just want to check in for anybody here who needs to go through those steps. I think when we had someone who didn't have Docker running, that might have been a longer issue, <laughs> but I, uh, I don't recall, but that person did come and, and finish later. But um, for anyone, I think I know there was a, a definitely a handful of people who didn't have kind installed. Uh, anyone here, let us know. Um, so we have a question. What is the config? Oh, what's the config minimum that we should use for kind config? Parentheses? You can just go with the default one. It will give you by default, I think one worker node and one control plane node. And this is totally fine, yes. So once we have done this, we copy this in the, that our kubectl has a context. And now our kubectl is ready to go. So I can get now kubectl get bots. And obviously, they're still running nothing. Um, so this is now all set and, and ready to go. Just for you to know, I, I said here on my right side, I set up two watchers. And I'm watching basically with kubectl get pods in two namespaces. And basically what it does, it's, it's watching every one second what is happening in the namespace we go system in my, my Kubernetes cluster. And it's watching every second what is in, happening in the namespace test in my cluster. And I'm just doing this that once we go, you can see what is happening. Meanwhile, we do GitOps, what is happening in real time in the cluster. So this is just a handy way to, to show you what is really happening. Okay, I'm just uh, sharing some links in the chat. <clears throat> So is anybody when not have kind installed that needs a little bit of time to get through that? Like I said, uh, when we had this in the past workshops, it went through fairly quickly. So it wasn't uh, too much of an obstacle. Don't be shy. Okay, someone's uh, still installing. That's good. Anybody else still going through the install process? Oops, sorry. So, meanwhile, yes, I, I think we we had a lot of questions from people about Flux. So then, most people are already more familiar with with, with GitOps. Oh, I wouldn't but, assume that though. I wouldn't assume that. I think we have a lot of people who come fairly fresh, and this might be their early, their first kind of deep experience with GitOps. So we definitely don't want to lose them, so. Which is the reason yes. why we have this product. Yes. In yeah, fact, so yeah, if anybody wants to tell us if this is your first kind of foray into trying any kind of GitOps project or product, uh, yeah, let us know in the chat. It would be helpful to know. Yes. and and. Basically, in a bit, and if we think about this, this is the beauty of GitOps is that we are leveraging a tool we are all, as developers already using, which is Git, and we are using it basically to do to continuous deploy to to Kubernetes and, and basically keep it in, in in sync with with what we have described in in our source control tool. So, it's really a beautiful way how we leverage what we're already using 
to do such a nice task. And we all know the benefits we get out of source control, which we can, we have audit, we get it for free because we do commits, we do pull requests, right? We can, we can revert a change, right? If something went wrong, we have a way to go back. We have basically peer control through so pull requests. It's, it's audited by, by colleagues of us, right? So, and we apply all these principles in a very natural way, how we handle as well our, our deployments and infrastructure. And this finally mostly sees a great impact on, on, our, on our DORA metrics, right? Which is basically important metrics if we think about DevOps, which is the deployment frequency. How often can we successfully release, right? We can often, we can more easily release if we are more confident that we, we can do this. And how we are confident is we, we trust the system that we can as well, for example, revert if something goes wrong. Um, the lead time for changes, right? The amount of time it takes a commit to get to production, we as well shorten because basically we directly integrate with Git what we're already using. And the, it, as well part is the chain failure rate, right? Um, what is the percentage of deployments that cause basically a failure in production? And with doing pull requests and have peer reviews, we bring this significantly down and time to restore service. And time to restore service, everybody that knows Git is, is quite quick because we revert the change and basically we reconcile what is happening in the cluster and we were, and basically we can restore the system. Just wanted to use this, this minute meanwhile we wait to maybe speak about a bit the benefits um, um, but of course, everybody who wants to do GitOps is probably already pretty familiar with it. Uh, again, we've had a couple of people saying this is our first experience, so I think it'd be good to go into that. Um, but before we do, um, I'm sorry, I don't quite understand the question, or if it is a question, it says, I have cube DNS and not core, question mark. I'm not sure. <laughs> Was that, I, was that a question or were you just making a comment of, of trying to match your output on screen? I see. Um, I don't think you need to match it completely. So if you have a cluster up and running, you should be fine. However you do this. Like Kubernetes. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is, um, this will only work if you don't have Flux already installed on the cluster. This is very important. You cannot have Flux already installed. Yes. Uh, yeah, and hopefully I think we set up a, um, error messages so that if you already have Flux installed and you try to go through these steps, it'll say, don't do this. It won't be a good idea. So hopefully that that um, was clear. Um, and a couple of people just exploring Flux re recently too. So um, so excellent. Yeah, uh, Davi, I'll move back to you. Maybe you wanna you were about to go into the benefits, uh, and then we can go back to the steps. I, I think yeah, we 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 spoke already a bit about okay. it. Uh, I, I I would say as the next step, if we feel ready, we 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 start now with the step that we install it. And for this, we need to run this command. So if we are ready, I'm gonna now, we go git ops install. And this will basically install the git ops runtime into the cluster. So I'm gonna press enter and you can see now is something happening. And in real time, you can see how in the namespace we go system, we create all the services we need. And for people who know Flux, you can see here all the specific controllers we are bringing up. Um, yeah, in fact, um, I'm, I'm still learning myself and I was curious that um, with uh, the Flux bootstrap um, that my team has often demoed, we show how 
the bootstrapping process is already get, get upsified, so to, so to speak. So I don't, I haven't been able to look into whether the weave get ups core starting points also kind of demonstrate a very get ups uh, mentality or not. So not to put you on the I spot. will show you how, how at least the get ups automation, we as well get ups it. So nice. you will nice. see how the definition, what we do with get ups is as well part of our file structure. Excellent, yeah. Because um, I think uh, we try to highlight it because for those of you who are brand new, right, it's like you're already doing GitOps by going through these steps because you're starting to implement a very GitOps uh, perspective. So how are we doing? Is, yes. Could anybody get to this point where we get a successful install? So to know, I, I think here in this guide, there's some more, yes. Um, so you should if if you basically now look what is going on in your cluster and we we copy this command which is kubecutter get pods in this namespace i can do this as well here you should see basically this output you should see that the controllers are up um just to verify that everybody is fine but if you got this message install finished you should be fine anyway so but if you want to see what happened in your cluster look what is happening in the in the namespace um, all right so i know that some people were getting kind installed uh, anybody else who've been who's been quiet uh, let us know um, definitely want to make sure that you're personally experiencing these steps and in the past we've also had some people like midway through finally raise their hand and say, I have to admit, I, I'm actually stuck right at the beginning. And so that's totally fine too. So let us know if anybody got stuck right at the beginning, we still wanna get you moving forward. I see you be successful. Too much kindness here. Yes, <laughs> good pun. <laughs> And yeah, it's been, I really appreciate people. If, if more people want to share, it's really helpful to see how uh, some people are just, this is their first time even experiencing GitOps. Some people have been using uh, Flux. Some people are just looking at it recently. So that's also just interesting to, and helpful for us to know like where people are getting started with bringing GitOps to their teams. I have a, 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 a silly idea for the product team here with uh, Jerry and uh, David. Maybe at the end of the process, because you remember the process is just two commands, basically. Um, maybe since tomorrow is already and several people are using the, the noun gitopsified, is that? No, wait, that would be an, ad an adjective, right? It's so a maybe at the end of, an <laughs> adverb, sorry. Um, maybe at the end, the the command line should say now you're get get upsified. <laughs> just a, just a silly idea. Yes, with a little wand emoji. For example. <laughs> um, so oh. I, I I mean if if yeah, should we I continue? Think, I think we can continue now. Okay, so now we are gonna we gonna make it more real and for this we're gonna deploy a workload onto onto basically our kubernetes cluster and what we're going to do is we're going to use that this this nice little pod info app that stefan prodan wrote which gives up basically some some test workload for kubernetes and you can find it here and we are not gonna do look at this repo specifically but what we do are going to do is we have here basically the manifest the kubernetes instructions to deploy this so you can find here instructions to deploy the back end and front end and this is basically just a, a set of kubernetes yamls you can see and what we're going to do is we're going to click on this repo which is uh, the which has basically the kubernetes instructions to deploy the pot info app that wrote Stefan. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fork it. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna fork it to, to myself. This takes a second. And now this is done, we're gonna um, prepare 
to, to clone it. And for this, we're gonna click on clone. We're gonna copy the SSH method, not the HTTPS method, this is important. And we go back to our terminal. We say, git, where is it? Git clone, we paste the link and we're gonna clone it. So now it's basically there and we're gonna change directory into pod info deploy. Here we can see we have our, our files and we can as well show how the tree structure look like. And we can see that we have here our deployment.yamls, which will specify the, the Kubernetes deployment. And if we are now ready, if everybody is there, we go where the magic starts. Um, but for this, we need you to, <laughs> to, to be ready. And as uh, Jordy wrote in the chat, <laughs> fork it and then clone, no cutting corners and choose SSH. <laughs> I only said it because I, I did it all the time. I think, I think with the first time with David, I cloned it directly because I'm that kind of lazy person. But no, you need to fork it. For this example, you need to fork it. I, I'm actually a little curious uh, what, what happens if you just clone it. Uh, what was it? What, what, what went wrong? Um, I can't remember. Yeah. It just Do you remember, work. David? No, but basically we need to, to create our own version of this because basically we're going to as well add files, right? So we're going to start to modify it because we're going to add the Vigo automation. You're going to see this in, in, a, in a second. Yes, exactly what Jerry exactly. said. We, we're going to exactly. push to this repo. And for this, we need basically our own version of it. Exactly. So uh, Stefan or the owner of the original repo that I cloned would not allow me to push me or anyone to push anything there. So we fork it, we make it ours in a way, and then we push, uh, we clone, and then if we make any modification locally, we can push, we can add, commit, and, and push to our own version of the, our own copy fork in this case of, of the repo. That, that's the... Makes sense. Makes sense. That's the reasoning oh. behind Thanks, Jerry. That's helpful. Um, okay, uh, unless anybody is stuck, if anybody cut corners, we'll move forward because yes, we want to get to the magic of, uh, of GitOps. So once this, this is done, this is the command. It's basically we go app add. So with this command, and you need to be in the directory of, of the, the, the repo, we're going to basically add this to the GitOps automation. And it's generating now a deploy key. And once it's done, and this is new with our, our latest release, it's going to generate a pull request against this repo we, we just forked. So now if I go here to put in for deploy, um, you can see that now we have here a pull request automatically. We're going to check our pull request. Oh, no. Wait one second. Or maybe, yes. Here is our pull request. Which, and this pull request, if we look at it, let's, let's check what it did. Um, it's basically adding our Vigo definition. This is our app.yaml. And it's basically git opsing um, our, our runtime definition. This is our, our flux specification. And this is already git ops because it's part of our repo. And now we're going to basically approve this pull request. Best practice, right? Um, merge pull request, confirm the merge. And we're going to clean it up, delete the branch. And now you can see how the magic will happen because now it's merged and it will reconcile in a few seconds automatically and will create the resources in our namespace test. While this is happening, let me remind you that as David was actually laughing, the best, I mean, he's running an example, he's approving his own merge requests, uh, pull, pull requests, it makes sense, right? But in a context in, re in which we 
partner with colleagues, we pair program, we have managers, we have security infosec people guarding specific uh, modules, specific areas of the code. The environment of a pull request to which you're uh, uh, pushing code changes, right? would be the perfect one, a pull request in GitHub, a merge request in GitLab and so on and so forth. It's the perfect way to provide visibility, ask for authorization should you require it, or just you know um, uh, apply the changes that were requested for you in an issue that you, that's connected to the pull request or et cetera, et cetera. So again, David is on his own doing this and he just did it, but it's, just imagine how how practical it is to provide visibility of all the changes over there and then get that uh, auto deployed in a way gitopsified by by we so so now you can see it brought up automatically my backend services and my front end services and my namespace test and basically without doing anything else we have deployed a, a workload to kubernetes through through gitops and the last step we need to do is, is this is just the documentation that you need to accept the pull request. Yes, we can of course as well see the app status. So we can see, we can ask basically BA or GitOps, what, what is the, what is the reconciled status? So if I do this, um, you can see basically what is the, the latest version in my Git repo and what is happening in my in my in my um, Flux version, right? And you can see basically that they are equal and it's all up and running. Um, and now to see what actually happened is let's forward because we don't have an ingress deployed with this together. So we're going to do something a bit more primitive and we're going to do a, a simple port forward from the front end service to expose the service. If you want to do this nicer, you would need to kind of install kind of an ingress like Nginx or something on a cluster and do something a bit more sophisticated. Now we are doing this. And if we now open this link, we will see that pot info dot the, the pot info app from from Stefan is, is up and running. So let's see who got to this step. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where are we, Kevin? I um, see your question. It's, it, tell me where you are, then we can help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kevin, if you fell behind, if you if you lost, Kevin, Sky, anyone, just, just ask honestly. We're here to help. Well, I think Kevin was joking there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, that's Kevin. Good, that's a good joke. Those of you that are here, please suggest or start thinking of changes that David may apply to this, right? Or not, David, in the future. Yes, of course, of course. Um, all right. So, and now we go basically, I think in the documentation to, to a real world example. So we need to change something with our deployment and, um, we need basically, a, a environment variable needs to change for the specific case. And what does this mean in GitOps? And now we will see how beautiful the power is. So what we're going to do is, and I'm going to do this. Uh, a bit. So David, if you go, but can you go back to yes. pod info? What's what's running live for a second? Yes. Yes. So yes, yes. would it be true? No, I, I lost it. Sorry, I don't Did remember. You close it? I no, I, I don't think you closed it. So yes, I'm always getting lost. In text. <sighs> Me too. Apologies for for actually so, interrupting you. Here, there. here it is. So this is what we are calling actual state, right? Because we, Tamar at the beginning mentioned DJ desired state. So as you can see in the company in Weave Works, we are strong on states, two specifically, declared state and actual state. There's more, I guess, names for both, but I think desired state, we've got a DJ named after that. So honestly, we're strong on that. So this that you're seeing on screen is actual state. 
the reality running, yeah, what, what is actually running on, on Kubernetes, in a Kubernetes, in Docker in this case, but in Kubernetes after all. And it's declared, what you're seeing there, it's declared in the declared state, which is in GitHub, like uh, you saw from David. So right now what you're seeing is GitOps in action. Anything that we want to change in, in the actual state that you see here will be applied to Git and it will go through the pull request mechanism. So everyone that needs to approve, just be, be informed will be done so. So nothing will go to production or to the environment, to the actual state without being seen. And this, this is applicable to an application, this one, pod info that you're seeing, but also to uh, infrastructure and elsewhere. Those are more complex use cases, still supported by GitOps. Apologies, uh, David. No, no worries. So now we're gonna we're gonna make a change, right? We're gonna change the something in the code and and finally in the desired state. So this is not mine. I go to my fork version, and you can use whatever you want to use for this. You can actually see that we have now this Vigo directory, and in this Vigo directory is basically the GitOps automation we are using for for Flux and our GitOps runtime, and I'm going to not stay here because we're going to make a change and we're going to change somebody requests that we need to change the color of the front end. So we go into our deployment.yml. No, don't change the color. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you're supposed to change the image. I was giving stuff yes. on a hard time because I know there are different options, but the best option yeah. is changing the image. Course, but oh. we want to show how we can basically do a GitOps change. So where is it? The I will. Chat uh, is colliding. I will. So we have it. here this environment variable which is called pot info UI color, and this we are injecting basically to to the container, and therefore the container knows how we need to to adapt. And we're gonna change this. I think. Let me see in the documentation what we suggest. I think it's color gray. So we're gonna co copy this color code. We are going to my pod info, and I'm gonna change this value of this variable. And now I'm gonna create a new branch. Best practices. I'm gonna say this is my color change to gray. Um, Tamao requested this color, and yeah. I'm going to propose this change. And we basically what we're going to do is create a pull request. This is so, another, another beauty of Git, right? That we know why the change went into production because Tamao requested it. Yes. Well, it's Tamao's fault. It's, it goes from. <laughs> we can always point to so, that uh, when we when no one likes the color, but you will always know why. I'm joking, obviously. And I'll say so. What we're going to pressure from is, above. <laughs> we created this pull request, and now we're at the point that. You can as well have all your GitHub actions, right? All your your pipeline which checks the code, the lib checks. Um, whatever checks you have, right? This will be all, this is the beauty of it. This all works with the tooling already have. So we're gonna merge this pull request. I'm gonna confirm the merge. I'm gonna delete the branch. I'm gonna clean it up. And now we're gonna see that basically um, there will be appear a new front end pod. This is just how Kubernetes works. It will bring up in a few seconds a new pod. It will reconcile. Let's wait a second. <laughs> you can see it. And now it will switch traffic to this new, new pod it created once it's ready. And then it will basically decommission the old pod but this is more of the beauty you get from Kubernetes. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna port forward again. And if I go now to our front end service, you there can you see it's great. Nice. So we, we Tamao, look what you did. Actually it horrible, very but, good. <laughs> but nice, well done. 
So, that, that's so yes. As a developer, you're running a very simple app in Kubernetes and you're taking, I mean, you're controlling it effectively. You are giving visibility to everyone in the company. You are solving requests from people in your team. You, you are having a log of all the changes and the reasoning behind the changes. And that without knowing a single technicality, you know, being an expert in Kubernetes at all. And that's basically it. And now we can go through a third scenario, right? So somebody freaked out and said, oh, I don't like this at all. So then we can use again, the beauty of Git to, to reverse this change, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to pull request closed. I'm gonna open this one up and I'm gonna revert this change. So, and if you revert this change, yeah, it will create a new pull request. This is just how Git works. And now we're going to revert this pull request. We're going to roll back. And this again, think about what really matters for your business. This is how you restore a system that is fading. So basically now we, we have done everything. So again, we will see the magic happens in a few seconds. This will bring up the new pod. It's almost ready. It will decommission the old one. Once it's ready, we we'll see this in a second. It never, it and, never stops to amaze me. This it's incredible. You've released, and, for example, you know. There you go. Go. Yes, and now we're going to port forward again. And wait, let me reload it. Maybe it's still not up. Give me a second. Sorry, my, my computer's getting slow. And you can there see you it's go. it's it's where we where we started. And I know this is almost yeah, a too simplified scenario, but it's just to show you the working principle. Um, how you can very quick restore your system with, with GitOps. Exactly. You've and released for here, example, something with a vulnerability, you just roll back from Git and you're good to go. Yes. And um, for anybody who, uh, well, first of all, hopefully if you're, those of you let us know that you're brand new to GitOps, hopefully this was a, a helpful demo. Uh, secondly, if you are still um, stuck anywhere, we're happy to um, sit and make sure we get through the steps. Alternatively, I've also shared our Slack channel where um, many people who got stuck on bigger issues uh, were able to complete all the steps through our continued help on Slack. So that was great. Uh, so just wanted to check in. Uh, yeah, where I wanted to, to yeah. show quickly some more stuff. And um, basically what is important that we always favor convention over configuration, but this means just because you have seen that we make it very simple with some opinionated way how we do things by adding automation to your platform repo or to your directly to your app repo, it doesn't really matter for us. You have all the flexibility to do this and you can, if we, for example, write, um, I think it's we go at, at app, and then we make a help. Oh, let me check what the exact comment was in the documentation. Um, if we go, we go app at, ah, I got it wrong. We go app at. Dot. You can see basically all the options you have, and there are a lot to basically configure it in the way you need it, to specify the specific Helm resource or specify the, a specific Git repo or a branch or whatever. So you, we give you all the power and flexibility to do whatever you want. And as well, 
if you need something that is not directly exposed to Vigo, you have this proxy command. So you can write Vigo flux and add the, the, the flux command you need to basically bypass the, and the Vigo and directly go to the engine. This is what I wanted to show to, to round this up. And now we, yeah, this is basically the demo. So we have a question is, um... How does this relate to Cloud Foundry, which makes me smile because I used to lead the Cloud Foundry community back when I was at VMware and Pivotal. Um, any thoughts on that, Jordi or Doug? Well, probably you. I mean, you're the best informed to respond. I've got thoughts, but very, very uh, poorly informed. Yeah, I was there in such the early days that I, I can't really say where Cloud Foundry is right now. Um, it's developed and advanced so much; it's become such a huge thing. I think they both aim for the for the same thing in a way. Maybe mentioning Heroku is too much, too much of a, of a convention in a way. But I think that the aim of Cloud Foundry and and companies like Pivotal or us or and and we've GitOps is to make the underlying complexity. So for the, for those of you that are very mature with Flux, and we've got plenty at the company, you'll find yourself pretty much suited, suited with raw Kubernetes, if you wish, and maybe Flux. Um, for those of us that are not so happy managing those settings, and settings might be a actually a bit of a reduction or a, a, you know, a simplification, but those of us that want to actually focus on app delivery, then these, so, these sort of things, and I think Cloud Foundry back in the day and still today, is aimed at that, at, hey, focus on your code, Focus on delivering, you know, incremental value to it. Whether you're doing it for a personal project or in, uh, as part of your job, and we will take care of the underlying complexities. And I think it right now, as it is, again, bear in mind this was released 15 days ago, a bit more, but officially 15 days ago. I think there's a lot of progress in 15 days of product there. So just imagine by the end of this year uh what this will look like i mean if it if it feels magical a bit now which it does to me uh let's see what what uh, what this uh would, would look like when it's the this is the third one um i don't know uh the seventh the tenth and uh jerry uh so jerry's one of our engineers has been in the background who just popped in for a second thanks to jerry for for the help uh, i didn't know if you had an additional comment to that or if you turned on your camera by mistake yeah no nothing to add <laughs> um yeah and again i i'm very careful to say anything because i haven't been deep in the cloud foundry area in a, in a long time but you know i think a big difference is obviously we're very kubernetes focused um we're leveraging that power and i i know i know that the pivotal crew you know they they were coming out with some solutions that that leverage kubernetes as well um, but you know, this has been our focus area and we've been partnering with them. We've, we've done, we've talked with them quite a bit. And so, um, I'd say our narrow focus is knowing the space. Um, we're like one of the earliest people to be running Kubernetes in production. Uh, we've been doing it now at this point, close to five years. So, you know, our deep knowledge and understanding how, um, I should mention that the concept of GitOps and especially how Flux originally was designed too, right? It's not, oh, Flux sort of started this GitOps. It's really actually the, nat the natural evolution of Kubernetes itself, right? Those core capabilities, it's really exciting to see how it led to all this innovation of discovering, oh, if it's built that way, then how do we extend upon it? And you know, we're really excited that like for us, Flux was actually built for an internal need at first. So it was really built for what we wanted. And since we're very open source minded, we just were, we just had it out there. And, and so it's been such an exciting journey, not only to see people grow and evolve using Flux and having that community grow, but now it just justified that we would build a product on it, right? So that's really, really exciting. I think you defined it much better than I did at the beginning. Uh... Uh, you, you did an excellent job. It's it's it, 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 in a way we did it 
for us to solve our needs and then released it to everyone at, at the same time. And uh, yeah, and the same with the coinage of GitOps. It's it's something that it's a realization rather more than than sort of like a statement of truth, sort of like uh, gospel or something. We, 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 it just clicks with us and with many other people. Yeah, uh, that's the beauty of being so deeply within a space technologically <laughs> that it's not us running around going, okay, we need a catchphrase. Like what's the, you know, exactly. what's the thing that we're going to put out there? It was, oh, we're observing this thing happening. And Alexis was like, you know, oh, I'm going to call it GitOps. And, uh, you know, I've reflected, some people have heard um, that we came out, I think around February in that year, 2017 with a blog post. Mm -hmm. And I went to the very first Helm Summit, I think it was in May. And it was crazy how everybody was saying GitOps as if that term had existed for years, you know? And then I think the best tweet to Alexis when he tweeted about it was someone was like, oh, you know, we've been doing this for a while, but I came up with a very complicated <laughs> expression. I wish I had thought of GitOps. Like that's just very, you know, that's much catchier. The original one was operations by pull request, right? Um, I don't know if that was ever a catchphrase, but it's definitely a way that we- Oh, oh, it, it was a, yeah. a, a okay, okay. Um, and we also have a great question here on uh, yeah. what's the difference between Flux and Flagger? Yes, so I would say Flux is basically the engine to reconcile between your, your what is happening in your Git repo and what is happening in your cluster. And Flagger is adding progressive delivery. So if you want to, for example, to do blue-green deployments, you want to do A-B testing, or you want to do canary releases, this you get through Flagger. So often you would use both in conjunction where you get from Flux the reconciliation and you get to Flag as a, as a progressive delivery part. Is this clarifying your question? Yes, good. Yeah. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, so the Flagger project was also built by Stefan on my team uh, who created PodInfo and um, the decision to bring Flagger within um, the Flux org uh, in GitHub was also that um, we recognize there are plenty of people who use Flagger without Flux, and we're continuing to support those people. They're doing um, really, really amazing, interesting work there, and we, we continue to collaborate. Um, but we also know that part of Flagger is optimized to work with Flux, so we wanted to eventually make that move so that um, certainly it works with different uh, tooling, but obviously within our family, like Stefan is a maintainer of Flux, um, has been very committed for all this time on it. So, um, you know, we've also been building for maximizing the capabilities that Stefan envisions for Flagger and then to also just say like, well, let's put this part of the um, the Flux family of, of tools and, and technologies. So um, again, really excited by all the exciting things that we see people doing with Flagger. Every year at KubeCon, we just discover people we don't even know. They're giving talks on Flagger, right, and how they're using it. Um, and, and we all become friends uh, eventually, but um, it's, you know, very, very useful out there. Um, so at this point, I will uh, say that we're going to close the recording. Um, but if anybody is absolutely stuck, we're happy to sit around a little bit longer and um, Otherwise, uh, we hope that you will see us on Slack. I will put the um, Slack links again in uh, our Zoom chat in case you miss them, but we definitely want to help people get over the line. So with that, we'll do an official closing of this workshop. We really appreciate uh, Jordi Mon and David for presenting and Jerry hard at work in the background answering all the great questions and um, giving a lot more of the detail as the person working on this. So with that, um, I really appreciate everybody's questions and comments. And uh, again, uh, I'll, we'll stick around, but we will end the official recording of this event. So thank you for that. See you at the next workshop.